Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to give you all a crash course in counting. Well, maybe not a Sesame Street version of counting, but the Home Assistant version of counting. Now the reason we'll be doing this is that it's very handy in Home Assistant to know the counts of things. These could be the number of lights that are turned on in your home or the number of doors that are open. And then to display these in a formatted list that you can view and action. So let's get those fingers ready and let the counting begin. Every entity in Home Assistant is associated with a domain. This is a category that groups entities together. At last count, there were 25 such domains, such as lights, switches, media players, etc. For the purposes of this example, we'll be using the light domain and counting the lights that are on, as that's the most requested example by far. Now we can see these light entities in the light domain by navigating to the developer tools in the left hand menu, selecting states at the top menu, then in the filter entities typing in light dot. This will bring up all the entities that are within the light domain. It will show us the current state and the attributes of that entity. Now I hear you all say, just count those and you'll have the figure, right? Well, no. Look at the first entity in my test environment. You can see it says light.alarm underscore lighting underscore group. This is a group that was created to contain a number of lights that can be turned on and off if the alarm is triggered. But the point is, it's not an individual light that we can count. It's a group of lights. Likewise, if you scroll down, you can see entities for light.home underscore hub underscore status underscore LED. This is simply the status light for the Rio Link Home Hub. Check out that video in the pop-up above. Obviously, we don't want to count this as a light either. So we need a way of identifying real lights as opposed to these pseudo entries in the light domain that we don't want to count. Now, although there are ways of identifying an individual light as opposed to a group, these vary depending upon the protocol used. As such, the most reliable way is to use labels. Now, if you don't know what a label is, then check out the video in the pop-up above where I take you through what they are and why they are important. So how do we list off all of our lights in the light domain and allocate labels to each of them? Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services, Entities. In the search bar, type light dot. This will bring up all the light entities, but this will include groups, LEDs, floodlights, etc. Now this is where you need to make some decisions. Most of you will only want to count internal lights that are on, but you also might want to count external lights that are on, both of which are possible and totally legitimate. You need to consider the label according to the individual needs to uniquely identify each category you wish to count. I would suggest attaching labels for light, security, LED and group, but you might want to add additional groups for external so you can count the external lights. To allocate the label, select the entity. Now select the cog in the top right hand corner. Select add label. As this is the alarm group, I wish to add a label of group. When I type group in, I can see that there is no group label already in existence. So I need to add the group. Optionally give it an icon and press create. Once you're finished allocating your labels, press update. The group label will be shown underneath the entity name. Now repeat this exercise for all light entities in the light domain. If you're planning on counting the number of open doors or windows, then you could do the same exercise by labeling the binary sensors. But since this is a much larger domain, it's much easier to search for the word opening and label these, as these should be all the contact sensors for your doors and windows. Now we are set to test our counts. To do this, we'll be using templates. Navigate to Developer Tools and Templates. The Developer Template is a very powerful and very handy for testing out expressions to see if they work before implementing them. We'll start with counting the number of entities that are in the light domain. Press clear in the template editor and confirm with OK. Now type in the following. I'll put a link to a document that contains all of these commands in the description. Now I don't have 47 lights in my test environment, but this number includes all those LEDs and security lights, etc. So now we have labeled all the entities in the light domain, we can exclude those from our count. Let's start with the groups. 
Here we select all the entities in the light domain. Then we reject based on the attribute for the label as group. Then we list and count the number. Again, this example will be in the document and listed in the description. Now let's expand the exclusion for LEDs and security lights. Here you can add in whatever additional labels that you wish to exclude. Now for our final command, we want to only select those that have an attribute of on. And we can see the resultant of 8 for the study lights that are currently on. Likewise, by changing the state equal to, we can count the number of lights that are off, with all the same exclusions for security, LED and groups. Now we have developed our templates that calculate the correct number of lights for turned on and off. Let's create custom sensors so that we can use these in a dashboard. Now we are going to need a file editor. I'd suggest using Studio Code Server. If you don't have that installed, then use the link in the pop-up above and go and install it and come back when you've finished. Navigate to Studio Code Server in the left-hand menu. In the folder list, check for a file called templates.yaml. This is not created as part of the default installation, but it's worth checking to make sure if you've created it in the past. If it's not there, then right click in the empty space below the file list and select new file. Enter templates.yaml in lowercase and press enter. Copy the following code from the document listed in the description. We just need to make two changes. Right click after the unique ID on line three. Select generate UUID at cursor and repeat this for line 12. These are needed if you want to be able to edit the entity through the Home Assistant UI. Now we need to link this new YAML file into Home Assistant so that it is recognized. Select configuration.yaml from the left hand menu. If you don't already have a section for linked YAML files, then it might be a good idea to add one. Remember that a hash in YAML files are commons and are not interpreted. Now enter a line, template, colon, space, exclamation mark include space templates.yaml. Now navigate to developer tools. Press YAML, select restart, press restart Home Assistant and confirm with restart. When Home Assistant comes back, we can go and have a look at our custom sensors to see if it contains our values. Navigate to settings, devices and services, entities. Search for sensor.lights. Here you can see our two custom sensors for lights on and lights off. You can also see a value for the total number of lights in the domain, which was generated by Spook integration. If you don't know what the Spook integration is, then check out the video in the pop-up above. Now we can use all of these entities on a dashboard, plus an appearance of a special card. The objective here will be to add the new sensor entities for the count of the lights on and off to this dashboard. Plus, we'll list off all the lights that are on, but exclude the groups, LEDs, and security lights. Navigate to a dashboard. I'll be using a new dashboard that's using this section view, but this will work on any type of dashboard. Press the plus icon in the new section. Search for and select entity. Clear out the value that is stored. Search for and select sensor.light underscore on underscore count. Optionally give it a name and an MDI icon and press save. Now duplicate this entity. Change the entity to light underscore off underscore count. Change the name and the MDI icon and press save. Now we could code the list of lights that are currently on and display these in a markdown card. However, why bother coding when we have a card that works perfectly and most would say looks even better? Now this card deserves its own video as probably one of the most powerful cards in hacks that is used the least. Make sure you watch this section of the video and let me know in the comments if you'd like a full video on this card as I think it's amazing. Now you will need hacks installed to use the auto entities card and if you don't then watch the video in the pop-up above and come back once installed. Select hacks from the menu in the left hand side. Search for and select auto entities. Now press download in the bottom right hand corner and confirm with download and reload your browser. Make sure to refresh your screen and make sure that download does not appear in the bottom right hand corner to confirm that these are downloaded correctly. Now let's use the auto entities card on our dashboard. Press the plus icon, search for and select auto entities. Now press show code editor. 
Now this video is already getting way too long, so copy and paste the code from the link in the description and I'll explain it. In line 2 show empty will show the title even if there is no lights that are currently on and listed. If set to false the card will effectively disappear with no lights are on. Line 4 is the card type that will show for the entities that meet the criteria. Several alternative cards are supported, but check the documentation if you have a specific card in mind or leave as entities. Line 5 is the title that will be displayed. Line 6 allows the title to be shown even when the card is empty. Line 7 will show the colour of the lights on the entity card when the light is on. Line 8 to 11 are the filters for what entities will be included into the results. This is where we include that all the lights are on. Line 12 to 15 are where we exclude of the entities returned for the inclusive filter. This is where we exclude all of the lights that have the label of group, LED or security. So in this example we have 8 lights that are on and 18 lights that are off. We have a list of lights that are on and we can even turn individual lights off if required. I think you'll agree this is a very helpful screen and one that I use extensively. Now I know this has been a long video, but we have covered a lot of topics. Domains, templates, developer tools, custom sensors, configuration.yaml, auto entity card, and even touched on the section view dashboard. The concepts that we have covered, you can adopt and adapt to many different scenarios. If you have any specifics that you'd like us to cover, then let us know in the comments below. Do you think this is overkill to know the number of lights on? Do you think that you found a better way of doing this? Let us know in the comments. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then hit that thumbs up, like, share, and comment. And if you want to see similar material, hit the subscribe button. Or if you want to support the channel, then why not become a channel member? Links in the description. And if I've helped you, why not a super thanks or a PayPal donation? It's much appreciated. Until the next one.